Hi there. Welcome to What Makes a Dungeon, the series with a name that I just can't seem to agree on. Glad to see you. In the last episode, we both made a set of criteria and used it to analyze the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time. It was very impressive for me, considering how often I make videos. Regardless, I'm back and ready to continue this series, and today we have an actually interesting topic for a change. So without further delay, hi, I'm Mallow, this is What Makes a Dungeon, and let's talk about 3D Zelda dungeon design. <laughs> So before I truly start, I should explain the differences between the two dungeon styles, as the next episode will also be analyzing the differences. A 2D dungeon is often very non-linear and open. You usually have the choice between multiple locked doors and keys at once, and can choose where to spend them. These dungeons often require backtracking and make good use of the key item. The drawback to a 2D dungeon is that the level designers can't experiment with ideas that change the dungeon itself without making it super obvious what it did, due to the limited view the player has. This is the reason why so many people hate the Jabu Jabu's Belly Dungeon from Oracle of Ages, as it's hard to visualize how the dungeon will change due to the changing water levels. A 3D dungeon has the ability to manipulate the space, and the player can see what's going on. This is most evident in Stone Tower Temple from Majora's Mask, Great Bay Temple from the same game, Ocarina of Time's Water Temple, and Skyward Sword's Sand Ship and Ancient Sister, although there's plenty of other examples. The main drawback to this type of dungeon is that they're often much more straightforward than a 2D dungeon as they can be much more complex to explain to the player. And when it, the dungeon changes, it usually requires a cutscene to switch from one form of the dungeon to another. So there are advantages and disadvantages to making a dungeon in the third dimension, with its crazy z-axis of pain, as I just mentioned. However, there are fantastic examples of good, and not good, 3D Zelda dungeons. Let's move on to the point of the video. Let's talk about everyone's favorite element, water. Well, okay, I know that water dungeons are slightly hated in the Zelda community, Slightly, but I do believe that they have lots of potential. I find myself having the most fun with water dungeons when they appear and aren't terrible. So with that being said, let's talk about the seventh circle of hell, Ocarina of Time's Water Temple. Okay, so yes, this dungeon is a huge maze full of twisting rooms and keys that are nearly impossible to find without buying a copy of Nintendo Power or asking your local neighborhood video game god, aka me, for help. And all of this is made 20 times worse when you have to pause the game every 8 seconds to put on and remove the iron boots. Well, yes, these can be annoying and fairly tough to understand at times, but I will argue until the end of time, haha pun intended, that this is still a fantastic dungeon. Firstly, it's one of the only dungeons in Ocarina of Time that is non-linear. You can't choose which locked door to open first, but you absolutely can find keys out of order and completely miss a key until later, later in the dungeon which is something that actually happened to me in my footage, and something that is nearly impossible in Ocarina of Time's other dungeons. Plus, all of the keys are hidden well and require usage of the player's spatial reasoning. The best example of this is this key right here, which is under a platform that rises up when the player raises the water level, and underneath it is the key. Many people didn't like this location, and Nintendo made it more obvious in the 3DS remake, but that kind of killed the puzzle. The dungeon did a clear amount of signposting in order to subtly tell the player where the key was, there's this platform at the bottom of the area, surrounded by spikes, around the moving platform, and you can see the edge of a hole during the cutscene of the water level rising. But the main thing in the dungeon that sets it apart is that it falls under the non-linear puzzle box category, if you remember the last episode. This means that the dungeon itself is a puzzle. In this case, the player can raise or lower the water levels of the entire dungeon in order to access different rooms or change existing ones. This makes for some super interesting puzzles that utilize a 3D space really well as you can see when platforms move up and down and how rooms are affected through the changing water level. The player actually needs to use memory and spatial reasoning in order to properly understand the dungeon, something that a lot of modern Zelda dungeons lack. This is why I get so angry when people say that the water temple is complicated. It's not. At all. It's just different from the others and requires thought to get through. Probably my favorite puzzle in the dungeon is this one, the bomb of a wall. In order to solve it, you need to lower the water level to the first floor, then enter the tower in the middle and raise it to the second, then swim up through the tunnel and bomb the wall to get the key. The water temple is full of super interesting and memorable puzzles like that. Puzzles that make you stop and think, and makes you consider how changing the dungeon will affect it. This is a staple of good 3D Zelda dungeon design, and will reappear when I talk about water levels at a later time. Moving along to a poor example of a 3D dungeon, we have Ocarina of Time's Shadow Temple, which can be summed up in one word, linear. The entire dungeon is just a straight line, with very brief and occasional diversions to get keys. It's almost entirely built on combat and has absolutely no major backtracking, 
and has very simple and easy to figure out puzzles. The Shadow Temple has some good things about it, like the creepy atmosphere and music, but for the most part, it's boring. While the Water Temple had puzzles that are simple on the outset, they were made more complex because of its design and structure, which is something that the Shadow Temple can't claim. The item is used sparingly throughout and is found super early in the dungeon, making it a little superfluous. Considering that the Lens of Truth is found outside of the dungeon and is used more frequently throughout, including the boss fight, why isn't that the key item? Wouldn't it make more sense to solve puzzles without it by hitting switches to reveal the truth? That would make for a cooler dungeon and have the key item be more useful. The Shadow Temple's cardinal sin, however, is its lack of backtracking. Every key is found right before one locked door, and there's no choice in keys like there was in the Water Temple. This can be done well, like with the Spirit Temple. In that dungeon, each key is found before another, but it doesn't feel linear as you're weaving through previous rooms and backtracking to use keys in both the Mirror Shield and Silver Gauntlets. The Shadow Temple does not do this. Rooms in previous areas may as well just vanish when you leave them, and there's no reason to explore. Because of this design, the dungeon is the first example of a straightforward dungeon that we've seen. This dungeon is a bad 3D dungeon because it is straightforward, simple, lacks memorable puzzles, doesn't manipulate the 3D space or connect to itself, and has no section of it that cannot be done in 2D. So what have we learned? Well, that 3D dungeons can and should experiment with space, even in a small way like the Fire Temple's dropping pillar or the Forest Temple's twisting hallways. Even if a 3D Zelda dungeon decides not to use the space, it shouldn't ever be linear, and this goes for all Zelda dungeons, and is a point I will certainly come back to at later points in this series. Anyways, in the next episode, grab your sword, shield, and rolling pin as we push Zelda games flat to see what makes for good 2D Zelda dungeon design. I will see you all then. Hi there, thanks for watching. If you want to follow me on Twitter for updates on new videos and bad tweets trying to be funny, you can do so at Mallow Pro. This is a series now, which is interesting, and I want to put more effort into the production to make it as good as I can. If you have any suggestions, leave them below. Anyways, I actually don't have any of this, I forgot. This is kind of all done in one day, so... See you next time. Goodbye.